Welcome to a Fresh Perspective podcast, catering to the latest in ingredient trends, consumer insights, and food news. Brought to you by Corbion. Hi, welcome back. I'm CJ. And I'm Jenny. And this is Fresh Perspective, a podcast that is about everything food. Um, and today we are talking about everything sugar, which mm. uh, sugar is one of my favorite things in life. I know. I know. Me too. And then people tell me that I'm addicted to it. Like, oh, well, you just need to stop eating sugar because you are an addict. And I'm like, I like to think that, no, I'm healthy and I don't eat a lot of sugar, but then like Mm -hmm. there'll be a tray of cupcakes and I will scrape off the frosting and just eat like a pile of frosting, which is straight up sugar. That's exactly what my kids do. They scrape the top off and they leave like a licked cupcake on the thing. There has to be a good ratio of frosting to cupcake. Like I will cut the cupcake in half, scrape off the frosting and put it in there like a little sandwich and then trim off so it's a good ratio in my bite. You have like a plan. That's like a uh, strategic cupcake eating plan. I don't know if it's considered a condiment, but I think it's it, it falls in like the same category of conveyor belt of condiment into my mouth. Um, <laughs> so that is what I do. Today, yes, as I said, we're talking about everything sugar. And mm-hmm. I know it's a huge topic in the food world. Everyone's um, concerned about their health and healthy eating and right. making sure that they know what's going into their bodies. And Now a lot of companies are on missions to figure out how to either reduce sugar or uh, reduce sugar in their products, but not affect the taste and make sure the consumers still want it, but to kind of appeal to some of that healthy eating desire. Yeah. And to that end, we we read this article, right, Mm -hmm. about Nestle and this uh, low sugar chocolate bars. Did you read that? Did you read the article? I did. Yeah. I did. The Wildstorms. Yeah. Did you see that they were making less sugar by hollowing out sugar crystals? I see that blows my mind. And that is like crazy food scientists, genius. Wow. Doing incredible things. I know. Maybe that's why it's a wowsome. uh, Oh, marketing. (laughs) What I find interesting is that it right now is not doing that great. Like they've launched it two years ago in the UK and it just did not get the demand from consumers that they thought it would. And so what I think is interesting is that all the consumers say, like, even I say, no, I want less sugar, but then you give me a less sugary option. And I'm like, "Mm, no, no. Right. And you know, for me, it's like, I, I am always like, we always talk about, I'm always like perpetually on a diet. And so I don't want to eat the sugar because it's really, you know, bad for you. And it also helps you gain, makes you gain weight and things like that. So then you say, okay, I want sugar-free, but sugar-free means that they're going to add some other sweetener in there, right? Because chocolate without sugar is nasty. I don't know if you've ever just tried cocoa powder. It's gross. Um, And so they have to put something else in. And then you hear, oh, this one causes cancer. And this one, you know, activates your glycemic index. And I'm like, well, I have no idea. I don't know what's the right thing to do. Exactly. Maybe I just have one bite of my full sugar chocolate bar, get the, you know, the sugar fix that I need. And then at least I'm not causing cancer. Of course I do drink diet Coke. So, I mean, honestly, I don't know if I care that much. But, but. this is exactly what we're going to talk about today with, um, with all of our questions and, and some of the, the labeling changes that went on. We'll drop a, mm-hmm. a link to the article, what we're talking about in the comments below. And let us know if you are looking for low sugar options or what your low sugar favorites are or if that's even something you pay attention to. And while you're at it, maybe take a moment to like or subscribe to our channel um, so you can find all the new episodes and all the cool information that's coming. That's right. But you can visit with us all the time. Now we'll We'd introduce love to have you. our guest for today, uh, Marge O'Brien. Yay! Hey, guys. Hi, Hi How are you? Good. How are you? Welcome Not back. Not bad. Thanks. So happy to have you back. We love to have you on the show. You're yes. a constant now. Yay. Have you heard about the Nestle's changes and and their commitment to lowering sugar in their products? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They said like, I don't know, it was like a a couple of years ago that they were going to try to cut it by 40%. And I was like, what? 40% in in chocolate and confectionery? That seemed like a lot since, you know, it's kind of a critical element to the product. And will it taste gross? I think that was part of what you know what the article was about is you know is you're taking all that out is it now going to be disgusting are you filling it with something else what what do you think is driving the change or the 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 desire for companies to want to lower sugar is it something that's coming from consumers or oh yeah 
Good question. I mean, it's, it's kind of twofold. So there's certainly a set of consumers who are pushing to have better for you products available. And then a lot of it is the government regulations that are being pushed mm. to reduce obesity throughout the world. And sugar is one of the key contributors to it. So, Which kind of leads us right into our questions for today around this topic. Um, I know at Corbion, we did a lot of proprietary research on sugar and some of the labeling changes that are happening on food and mm -hmm. the food packaging. So first, can you just tell us a little bit about the changes that the FDA was making to the labels and a little bit about the study just so we have some general information and are prepared? For the yeah. Discussion? So the, the FDA had proposed a bunch of different labeling changes. The one that was most significant that we were looking at is on the nutritional panel, added sugar was going to be called out because through all the the nutritional experts they're saying the added sugars is definitely something that that hurts jenny you were talking about like perpetually on a diet so um the added sugars is something because you know there's sugar naturally in fruit for example and so mm -hmm. it's not so much the the natural sugars it's the added stuff that is the thing that's going to kind of send people over the edge so um and as that relates to bakery then so added sugar would be like carbs turn into sugar and then we also added sugar to the bakery item or how, mm -hmm. how does that added sugar work? Exactly. So um, any, any additional um, sugar that you're putting in at the bowl when you're mixing um, is going to be mm -hmm. called out on the label so that you can see um, in the sugar, you know, if it's like 18 grams of sugar and then it says 17 have been added, you get an understanding of, you know, what was sugar. Yeah. Right. And it, what's okay. really hard is that in a lot of food period, especially baked goods, sugar is highly functional. So yeah. when yeah. we start talking about lowering the sugar, which we can, we'll get into it, it becomes a, a struggle on how you lower the sugar, but keep the functionality in the product still tasting and looking and feeling the exact way that it did before you took the sugar out. So with that study, um, what we wanted to do was to say, you know, with this added sugar, we wanted to see one, if consumers notice the change in the label and two, how would it impact purchase decision? Because oh. in baked goods, obviously, as CJ just said, it's a key component to the product. So, um, you know, there's a lot of concern with what is this going to do to product demand? Yeah, and I'd be interested to know, I mean, I expect any baked good that I have pretty much to have added sugar. Mm -hmm. So to add it to the label, is that going to make a huge change? Like, I don't know, I'm looking at the overall sugar, probably. I'm interested to see what the study said. Yeah, so what we ended up doing was basically splitting out between people who were more likely to read labels and people who weren't really likely to read labels. And we wanted to understand their, you know, how much would that impact? And so for people who are your core label readers, the amount of added sugar would impact their purchase decision. So I think it was around, yeah, around like 30%. Oh, um, the non-label, well, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, because you have to ask yourself, like, are those the people that are buying your products to begin with? Mm. So think about somebody who's a super label reader, very health conscious. Um, how frequently are they purchasing cupcakes? I don't know. Right. And, and when Two they birthdays do, a year or something. But, and, and that's what we learn. Like when they do purchase cupcakes, are they really concerned about the sugar? Because they know what it is and they're looking for like more of an indulgent treat. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that we learned was it depends on the category and it depends I mean, on the occasion um, because people are going to be more willing to accept the sugar levels in a sweet baked good because they know what it is. And yeah, they exactly. it to be and, I know what, and I, that's exactly <clears throat> what I do when I'm going through the in-store bakery or going to buy my dessert, my treat for the week. I don't care what is in it. What is happening? I want it to be delicious. Like if I'm going to take that moment to have have some me time and indulge in a container of cookies, then I just want them to be really delicious cookies. Yeah. It also yeah. Dep depends on what part of the meal it is to me. Like if it's just a side piece of bread, like just an accompaniment, then 
I might pay more attention to it. But if it's like the main part of the meal, like the sandwich bread, I want it to be good. I don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah. We are here with Marge O'Brien, who is the director of uh, Global Market Insights and Research at Corbion. And we are talking about <laughs> sugar, uh, the sugar study that we, proprietary research we did at Corbion, and the label changes that are happening on the food side and the labels, and figuring out how that changes the way consumers decide what they're going to purchase. So I know we talked about it from a bread perspective um, and how that changes in bread and then sweet goods. Is that the same across the different industries? Are people being as cognizant of sugar or less cognizant of sugar in beverages? Yeah, the other aisles in the yeah. store. Beverages. Yeah. So for sure, beverages, <clears throat> excuse me, was a category that was hit hard. And I think, you know, anytime there's something hard hitting, it proves it can be an opportunity. And we see that a lot of the beverage companies have really done um, innovation in that. And so if you walk that aisle, there's so many different beverage options now, um, ranging from smaller cans of diet sodas as a way to manage the sugar, but also there's just whole new players that have come out that offer low to no sugar options. So in that category, consumers really were looking for the options. What we're seeing or hearing in the sweet baked goods side on the bakery side, yeah, not so much. I mean, consumers want that Mm. indulgence because it's not um, necessarily something that they're consuming every day. <clears throat> yeah, and I think that that probably maybe partially stems from the fact that like I don't want to drink my sugar calories. I want to eat them in a cake or in a chocolate bar. You know, so, like I would much rather drink a zero calorie drink with no sugar in it and then eat what I want to eat, you know. I I'm feel that way to too. That. Yeah. But what was interesting when we were doing this research was there were counties, right, or states that had put tax on sugar drinks Mm -hmm. and uh the way that affected the purchasing which you can explain more about it like how how that impacted the way people purchased and what they did after that yeah so it was really interesting um the first area in the u.s that it put a sugar tax on um on carbonated beverages was out in berkeley california and sales for those products within berkeley dropped about I think it was around 30%. But what we saw then is sales just outside of the Berkeley area went up about 15%. So they were driving. People were traveling for it. Exactly. (laughs) That's what was so interesting to me. Like I I want the zero calorie soda and I I felt the same way you were just explaining. But these, I mean, they were going to go to another county. Driving to another county to get that. Yeah. Right, so that they could avoid the um, the sales tax on the carbonated beverages. So, and I don't know, know if I'm just lazy, but even if there was an extra like ten cents on my soda, and I was drinking soda, I would still probably just pay the ten cents and get it across the street. Me too. Me too. <laughs> well, yeah. we are diving into this topic. Uh, I love it, and we have a lot more to dig into. But we are going to hop into our favorite segment: Eat, Save, Give. Now it's time for Eat, Save, Give, a thoughtful peek into the heart, mind, and taste palettes of our guests. So in Eat, Save, Give, we are going to give you three amazing items, and you are going to have to choose which one you are going to eat now, which one you're going to give away, and which one you're going to save for later. And I hope they don't have eggs in them. I, no way. <laughs> she will not think that they are I amazing. I remember this. Um, no, in honor of sugar and the discussion we're having, I went Yay. candy edition. Oh, so yum. I'm going to give you three candies, and you can pick. Eat, save, give. Okay. First, M&M's, your favorite variety. Whatever kind is, just sings to your heart. Um, we second, already know she likes to eat them the peanut and the take the top off and get the whole peanut out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we learned. Second, um, gummy bears. And third, the Cadbury flake chocolate, which if you have never had that, Jenny, do you know what that is? No. What is I will put chocolate? a link to this as well because it's fantastic. Eat, save, give, Marge. Cadbury flake chocolate, gummy bears, or M&M's? So 
I, of course, would have to give the Cadbury Flake to Jen Lindsay, who is our boss, because she discovered them in her trip to Ireland and loves them. So every time I go over there, I have to bring them back. And CJ now loves them as well. Are fantastic. They're like light and fluffy and melty in your mouth. Um, I would for sure eat the M&Ms now, of course. And save, I guess, save the gummy bears. I'm not, I guess, save them. March, don't break my them. heart. Don't I do might it. save them for a <laughs> quite a long time. <laughs> uh, I knew that was going to happen. Jenny, what are you doing? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm always down to try something new. So I'd probably eat the flake chocolate since I've never tried it. I would love to give it a, the old college try. Um, I would say so. My favorite M and M's are the kind with the peanut butter inside. Ooh, it's kind of hard to find those. I don't know why because they're so good. But so I'm gonna save those because I can eat those anytime. They're coated with a thin candy shell, so you know, last forever. And then um, I am gonna give away gummy bears because I my kids are with obsessed with gummy right now. I am <laughs> like my kids will eat the podcast coated in the sour stuff, it's and they suck all one. the sour stuff off. And it's gross to watch, and it gets stuck in your <laughs> teeth. And I'm just, I'm out on the gummy bear. So, what Side about you? Note, have you had the peanut butter M and M's mixed with the new brownie M and M's? So I don't. No. So no. You, you eat them both. You get like a chocolate brownie <gasps> deliciousness with peanut uh, butter in it. Yes. Yeah. So for me, I made it hard on myself always because I'm that smart. You pick three of your favorite things. Yes, I will. Yes. Always, always, always eat gummy bears and sour gummy bears and gummy worms and anything that is a gummy. Like I said, there's a small, small child that lives inside of my heart. He's wearing a cardigan because <laughs> he's... And somebody's like feeding him Rogers, gummy bears. He, he loves gummy bears and those are my favorite candy. I actually don't like chocolate very much. I know. I'm, I'm, bro- I'm broken on the inside. What is the matter? But I love the flake chocolate. So I'm going to save that flake chocolate because it is... Like the only candy I like that is just plain chocolate. Like normally I might pass, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that for later and eat it tonight. M and M's I will give away to whoever wants them. That's fine. Marge, me you probably want those. You're gonna have all of my M and M's. So um, today we are joined here by Marge O'Brien, the director of market research and insights at Corbion, and we are talking about the sugar labels. Um, changes on the on the labels that are happening where we're calling out added sugar and the way that is impacting the way consumers purchased. And we've kind of talked about how it impacts in bread and sweet goods and some of the beverage industry. And so I have a question about the sugar substitutes. Yeah. And I don't, was that covered in the study at all, Marge, when you guys did that? Yeah, okay, absolutely. So if it says that, okay, so let's say you have a label that says no sugar added because there wasn't any but it's still a sweet good, like it's a brownie. Mm-hmm. Um, do people, like, do they check out, like, what the su- sugar substitute is on that brownie? Because there would have to be one, I would assume. And then what types of sh- sugar substitutes are people feeling are the most healthy? Because yeah. I know that there are, there's a lot of stigma there's around so sugar substitutes. Yes, and you hear all the all the rumors about all of them. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was definitely part of the study, and – um, a lot of the consumers ask just what you, you said, Jenny, like, you know, it starts raising, well, you know, if they've reduced the sugar, what have they done to it? Yes. And what have they put in, which then brings up the, the alternative options. So what we found out is consumers are saying, yeah, you know, the artificial substitutes, not really into it. And most of those are very chemical sounding and Mm -hmm. I I can't say them. So I'm like, not so much. Um, Consumers do say they're open to natural sugar substitutes. So, you know, like honey or agave or, you know, monk fruit extract, those types of things. The challenge is those ingredients are higher price. So of course we know consumers Mm. want everything, but don't change the price and don't change my taste. And that's the struggle that most (laughs) manufacturers have. And I think what Nestle 
you know, with the product that they were trying, the, the Wowsums was, you know, it, it probably didn't have the taste expectation that consumers had and taste is king. And even though we say we want reduced sugar, mm -hmm. if it impacted my taste, I'm not really going to be into it. And oh, by the way, if you've done something and put artificial sweeteners in it, yeah, you know, not really into that so much either. So and it also gives point, a different taste. Yeah, like an so. artificial sweetener does not taste the same as regular sugar. Like yeah. there's a couple that get pretty close, but I, I mean, I can tell immediately and so can everyone, I think. Yeah. So is there a point where all of a sudden a consumer is looking at a product and, you know, say you remove 10% sugar versus 30%. Is there like a threshold wall or sudden the person's like, whoa, whoa, that's too much. That's definitely going to affect it. I don't want to try that anymore. Yeah, exactly. So when we were looking between the two groups, like people who read the labels versus people who don't tend to read the labels, um, it was like the label readers were like, oh, you know, up to like 20% reduction um, would be pretty good. And I'd be open to it before I start thinking, eh, what are you doing to my taste? Um, the non-label readers are like, oof, it's much narrower. They were like between 10 and 15% reduction. So there becomes another challenge. If you're a manufacturer, yeah. do you make the change? Do you call it out? And are you at risk of maybe alienating core consumers because they don't want the sugar reduction? So it's really a fine balancing act. Yes. I avoid sugar-free things. I avoid them because I think that they're full of chemicals that if we don't know that they cause cancer today, we will find out in 15 years after we've been eating them for 15 years, which seems to happen all the time. Um, and so I, I don't go for the low sugar, no sugar stuff unless whatever it is that it's, we're eating is like a fruit. So like a, a no sugar added pineapple cup is exactly what I'm going to buy. But when it mm. comes to like a baked good, I, I mean, never because I'm like, well, what else is in there? And is it going to hurt my kids? I'd almost rather just them just eat plain granulated white sugar than feed them chemicals that I have much less of a grasp of what it is. You know, the interesting thing that we also learned in the study was, you know, as a, as corporate responsibility goes, there's a lot of discussions in terms of sustainability and what responsibilities do corporations have. Mm. And when you link it in then with like the obesity challenges worldwide, it's a lot of companies feel like they should reduce sugar because it's the right thing to do. And then it becomes, well, all the questions that we just talked about in terms yeah. of like the artificial versus natural sugar substitutes. And it becomes a really complicated challenge for companies today. And I know do when we were talking to consumers, basically they said, Sure, we might try it if it had a little bit less sugar, but I don't want to pay more. I don't want it to taste any different. different. I basically don't want to change anything about my experience uh, <laughs> yeah, or I'm going to find go back to my old product. Yeah, exactly. Do you guys remember when they did the Cadbury 100 calorie chocolate sticks? Do you guys remember mm. when those came out? Mm -hmm. So mm. you might be too young, TJ. It was, I, I was in but maybe college. Not me, by the way. <laughs> No, that wasn't meant as an insult. I assume we're very close in age. I just know CJ's less aged than I am. Less aged. Less aged. Okay, that, none of that happened like I thought it was going to. Um, anyway, they came out. So it was their normal Cadbury chocolate. But it was a hundred calorie like stick that you could buy, and it was cheap. It was like a dollar a stick. Mm. But that way you knew exactly what you were getting. It and it was the product that you love because I don't know about you guys, but Cadbury is one of my favorite chocolates. Like I love their chocolate. Hundred percent. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Apparently, um, it's even better over in Europe. It is, Jenny. Next time I go, better on a Europe? side note, yeah. Next time I go, I will bring you back chocolate from Europe. Cadbury chocolate over in Europe is different than Cadbury chocolate here in the U.S. Well, as soon as we can go, I'm going. So maybe we can go together and okay. eat Cadbury chocolate all over Europe eat together. Eat chocolate through Europe. 
Yes. Just all the fun things. So, but I remember that as like, that's a great solution because it's smaller amount, but like for someone who cares about how much sugar they're getting, I'm still getting the product that I love. I know there's no weird fillers in it and it's just a smaller amount. So it's easier for me to not overeat. And, and I've definitely seen a ton of those, like the Oreo thins and the, yes, like same concept, smaller versions, but still probably the full original formula, full sugar, whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm to compensate, but, uh, we are already out of time. It always happens so fast. And all of a sudden I'm like, what, where every, eh, here we are. So, uh, <laughs> it, it does, it just flies by. So we're going to have to wrap it up for today. Uh, I'm sure we will have you on again and we'll have far more questions to continue talking about. Um, but yeah. for now, any final thoughts? Know your consumer is what I say to manufacturers all the time. And that will help determine what you need to do for the products that you're putting out. Thank you so much, Marge. I just love talking to you and your insights are always so good. I learned so much. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks for coming. We'll have you back. Thank you. Bye. If you need more information on anything that we talked about today, uh, sugar, labeling, how that's changing consumers' perspectives and what they purchase, or about any of the other things that are happening in the food industry, you can head on over to our blog at thebakerstake.com. You can also like or subscribe to our channel and get notified of when we have new awesome videos. But I'm out of coffee and we know I need copious amounts of this to continue to live, so I can go. (laughs) And don't forget, keep creating.